Good morning, I'm Reverend Lucille Fritz from the Huntington Congregational Church United Church of Christ in Shelton, Connecticut. No matter who you are, no matter where you are in life's journey, you are more than welcome into our faith community. Uh, my apologies for the sideways. Uh, for weeks I've had no problems with uh, uh, being able to get the camera oriented, but the last couple weeks uh, I've seemed to have some problems. So hopefully I'm in the right frame. Uh, just a reminder that this is our season of generosity. Uh, this year's theme is I'm about to do a new thing from Isaiah 43. And it's all about God constantly doing new things in this world to bring us love and to bring us light and to bring us hope. And we at HCC, UCC are also doing a lot of new things in this time of pandemic, uh, moving to a uh, online format, um, figuring out new ways to do outreach when we cannot be physically together and I think we're doing okay but uh, once we do get back in the building which we are hoping to do uh, this uh, in September at some point um, we're going to need a lot of help and a lot of equipment I've been using my cell phone to do these live streams and we're going to have to kind of upgrade into a streaming camera and figure out how to do it in the sanctuary. Uh, we also will need some expertise of people who may be uh, technologically savvy to continue our digital ministry. So if any of you would like to donate toward equipment or would like to donate your time and your talents uh, toward helping out with the technology, that would be greatly appreciated as we do a new thing to continue our ministry. Um, also, we are certainly grateful for all the pledges that people are keeping up with and for the donations that are coming in. Uh, you can always send them right to the church at 19 Church Street. Uh, you can go on to our website at www.huntingtonucc.org or you could download a nice little app on your phone, Give Plus, and uh, you can take care of uh, bringing your treasures to our congregation as we continue to minister. But we are so grateful for everyone for their time, their talents, and their treasures. So next week we are planning to have an outdoor service and for those of you who have the information, if anyone else would like information haven't gotten it, we do need to have people register for it so we uh, can keep attendance and also know how many people are going to be there so we'll have enough room for cars. Uh, so if you need more information on that, you could just uh, hit me on Facebook um, or uh, email the church and we'll get that information to you. So now let's just take a few moments to close our eyes and take some nice deep breaths. God created each one of us from the dust of the earth and God breathed into us life. God breathed into us God's presence. So as we breathe deeply now and as we breathe deeply always, know that we are breathing in the sustaining, the loving, the eternal presence of God. Take a look around you. Praise God for all this beauty. Take a deep breath of life. Praise God for all this sustenance. Be aware of God's all loving presence. Praise God for all this goodness.
Let us pray. Holy One, you know us already. Help us to know you better. Let us see you both in front of us and behind us. Infuse our worship with your spirit so that we may learn to recognize your presence all around us. <clears throat> we pray this in Jesus' name. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us come to God and confess our sins. God of all grace, may you look kindly upon us and offer us your forgiveness. At times we are stingy and greedy. At times we are hateful and judgmental. At times we are quarrelsome and cruel. We know that your forgiveness is abundant and ever flowing. May we accept it and be transformed into loving, generous, justice seeking and peace making people. Amen. God so loved the world that Christ came into this world not to condemn us, but to save us. So I say to you in the name of Jesus Christ that our sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. <clears throat> our scripture reading today is from Psalm 139, reading the first 12 verses. Listen for the word of God. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O God, Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me and the light around me become night, even the dark is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day, for darkness is as light to you. May God add a blessing to the hearing and reading of these holy words. Let us pray. Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. The book of Psalms is often called the hymn book of the Hebrew Scriptures. Contained in those 150 Psalms is most of, if not all of, the situations and emotions we experience as humans. Here are some examples. Psalm 12. Help me, O Lord, for there is no longer anyone who is godly. Psalm 18. I love you, O Lord, my strength. Psalm 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Psalm 51, have mercy on me, according to your steadfast love. Psalm 62, for God alone my soul waits 
in silence. Psalm 69, save me, O God, for the water has come up to my neck. Psalm 100, make a joyful noise to the Lord all the earth. Psalm 102, hear my prayer, O Lord. Let my cry come to you. Psalm 107, oh, give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. Psalm 120, in my distress, I cry to the Lord. And Psalm 150, praise the Lord, praise God in God's sanctuary. The Psalms are about human experience, human emotions put into words, crying out to God, both with songs of praise and thanksgiving, crying out to God with cries of despair and hopelessness and everything in between. But the Psalms are one of the many, many parts of scripture that remind us, in fact, all of scripture, that remind us that God is there. The whole of scripture is about people's experiences with God, how they viewed their interaction with the divine around them. And the Psalms are that one place where all those emotions, where all those experiences come together. And we hear the cries, the cries of joy, as well as the cries of despair. In our Psalm today, Psalm 139, this is all about reminding us that God is there. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, the grave, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me fast. We need to hear these words. We need to hear these words in good times as well as in bad times. And right now, we really need to hear these words because face it, things are a bit of a mess. There is a pandemic raging. There is the new awareness of the depth of inequality, the depth of racism, the depth of the social issues and the social problems that have come to fore during this time. This time, this pandemic in a way has opened up all the wounds of people that have already been there, but now they are wide open and they are oozing and bleeding. The uptick in domestic violence, the increased abuse of alcohol and drugs, the stress and the strain of people fighting for justice in this world. Everything has become such, so much more complicated Everything has become so much more clear of the issues and the pain and the suffering that is happening in our world and in ourselves. People are really having a hard time not being able to reach out to their family and their friends. And some are taking great chances to do just that. And then we have people putting their lives on the line every day for our convenience. 
our medical workers, people who are working in facilities of rehabilitation or nursing homes or convalescent homes, people who are working in stores, people who are putting themselves out there so we may have some sort of normalcy. And thank goodness in Connecticut, we've done pretty well. And the COVID cases have dropped precipitously. But all around us, in our country, the numbers are surging. We're not through this yet. We cannot be complacent. We still have to be on guard, taking care of ourselves and taking care of others around us. Wear your masks. Wash your hands. Only do what you have to do. Not just to keep yourself safe, but to keep other people safe as well. And in and among this, the Spirit of God is still moving. The presence of God does not leave us alone, even in this very troubled time, which many of us deny is even happening, which many of us don't even want to talk about or think about because the feelings and the emotions can be overwhelming when we look at all the pain and suffering all around us. But in that pain and suffering, God is there. You are there, O oh God. Every moment of our life, every praise, every thanksgiving, every cry of despair, every moan of pain, you are there. Thank you. Thank you, O oh God. But it just doesn't end there. For we who call ourselves Christians, we who claim that we are followers of Christ, Christ's very being was to show us that truly God is there. God is here with each one of us. Jesus embodied the very essence of God's love and life and hope and peace in this world. And Jesus came to show us God's presence and to be God's presence. But it just didn't end there. Jesus called his followers Jesus calls us to also be there where we can, how we can, to be in this world, to bring a little bit of love and a little bit of hope, however we can. I know a lot of people think that they can't do too much, especially if they're shut in their houses, or especially if they have a disability, or especially if they feel that they have no talents, but we always can pray for one another. We can send a card, we can send an email, we can call, we could text. There are many ways to reach out, to reach out with communication, to reach out with our gifts, to give to those charities, the churches, the organizations that are helping people, bringing a little bit of hope. And to be there where we can be, to do what we can in order to share that presence of God in this world. There is that old saying that we are Christ's hands and Christ's feet, and Christ's voice now in this world. That we are witnesses to the love and the grace and the eternity of God. We have our scriptures that people can read 
But we are living scriptures. We ourselves are psalms, hymns of praise and thanksgiving, and maybe hymns of distress and despair. We embody the life that God has given us, and we embody the call that Christ has put into each one of us to show God's presence in our own presence, to be that love and that light and that hope wherever we can be, but knowing that we are not alone, that God is with us. Your presence, O oh God, you are there. God is there. God is here. God is within us and around us and through us. Especially at this time in history, we need this assurance now more than ever. We need it. The world needs it. And we need to be that presence, however we can be. Thanks be to God. Amen. We offer up a prayer of comfort and concern for the family of Brian Glynn. We also pray for continued healing for Robin. Let us come to God in prayer. O oh God, you are here. O oh God, you are there. O oh God, you are everywhere. In every breath we take, in every move we make, we thank you. We thank you that there is no place we can go where you are not. Whether it's the deepest despair in our own minds or the furthest travel we could possibly imagine, you are there. We thank you and we praise you. We thank you for your son Jesus who embodied your presence. And we thank you for your Holy Spirit that is moving in us, assuring us, and helping us to be your presence in our own lives. We thank you, gracious God, for the blessings that are all around us. For even in a time that seems so uncertain, that seems so troubled. Your life goes on. The beauty of your creation is all around us. The beauty of your people is all around us. And we thank you. We thank you for our friends and our family, the people who support us and teach us, the people who love us and the people who challenge us. We thank you, gracious God, for times to celebrate, for birthdays and for anniversaries, for being able to get together when we can, socially distance, wearing masks. And we thank you that you are ever with us, hearing our cries, hearing our prayers, filling our hearts with your love. So we do offer up our prayers, gracious God. We pray for Brian's family 
and for the families of all those who have lost loved ones, the close to 140,000 people who have died from COVID, and for those who have died from other diseases, from violence, from natural causes, from accidents, from suicides. We pray for your comfort and strength to be with all those who are left behind. And we pray for those who are in need of your healing for Robin and for Danny. For people who are sick, for people who are recuperating, for people who are going through treatment, for people with chronic illnesses, we pray for your healing. And we pray for folks, gracious God, in the hospital and in nursing homes and rehabilitation centers, all those places where there may be loneliness and fear. May your loving and comfort presence be there. And may you be with all people who are feeling lonely at this time, who are feeling isolated, whose mental illness may be exacerbated, for people who may have lost their jobs or are on the verge of losing their jobs, for people who are facing evictions, for people who are facing increased domestic violence, for people who are worried and afraid. We pray for your comfort and your strength. And we continue to pray for our world where war, wars do not end, injustice does not end, but all the troubles still continue with a pandemic on top of it. We pray for your justice and for your peace, O oh God. And we pray for ourselves, that we may be purveyors, that we may be justice seekers and peacemakers, in our own life. May all of our hearts, gracious God, melt by the power of your love. And may all our ears be open to the cries around us that we may be your presence how we can, with words of comfort and strength, with generous gifts, and with our own witness of life and love. Thank you, God, for being there. You are there. You are here. You are everywhere. Thank you. Amen.
find ourselves, whether it is jumping for joy or whether it is crying out in despair, know that God is there. God is here. God is everywhere. And may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May God look upon you with kindness and give you peace. Amen. Thank you for joining me this morning. God bless.